yellow and it's a filmy, gross, foamy thing, and it would smell like open sewer. But we were there are new concerns tonight that the water declared safe to drink in West Virginia following a chemical spill three weeks ago may not be. The historic okay. wildfire season in California has taken another turn for the worse. This one's called the Valley Fire. North of Every day we see environmental disasters unfold across the nation caused by everything from governmental corruption to daily pollutants. But we don't realize that these disasters occur in our own backyards right here in North Carolina. <laughs> So my parents-in-law have a 700-acre cattle farm down in uh, Randolph County, which is, uh, they're actually in the Uwari River Basin, so it's, it's a little bit west of the, of the Haw. Um, and some years ago they started spreading uh, sludge on their pastures that came from the uh, High Point Wastewater Treatment Plant, right? And so that looked to me like a you know, a total win-win, right? Because they're getting rid of this stuff that builds up at the wastewater treatment plant, and, you know, they're getting free fertilizer, and so it's, like, environmentally sound and all that sort of thing. So I didn't know as much at that point about, like, what's actually in sludge. And Toxic sludge, which the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, refers to as biosolids, is a substance created from treating sewage. Everything that goes down the drain, whether through our toilets or our showers, goes to a wastewater treatment plant where it is filtered to produce clean drinking water to government standards. The leftover product, sludge, is used as part of an EPA program that distributes this substance as free fertilizer on farmland. However, treatment plants have not developed the technology needed to sufficiently remove all the contaminants that end up in our waste. Um, we've got all several high-tech textile manufacturers who are making you know, the, the sort of fabric that people like me, outdoors people, love to use. And they're using all these new compounds and chemicals, and some amount of that is going into the waste stream, and then it goes to the municipal treatment plant, and it gets treated, but the municipal treatment plant is set up to get the shit out of the water. It's not set up to get the chemicals out of the water. Right. Sewage sludge land application is a seemingly good option because it is a free program that benefits low-income farmers and their lands. Sewage sludge is a cheap solution to getting rid of this byproduct, especially since human waste has been historically used as efficient fertilizer. But there's more to the issue. You know, even EPA, even from the highest levels, everyone's saying, it's fine, it's just free fertilizer, it's yeah. great, you know, it's biosolids, we're not going to sludge, and it's yeah. biosolids, <laughs> it's free fertilizer for farmers, it's a seems good great. thing for farmers. And so, On the surface, sewage sludge seems like a great option for farmers. However, this byproduct of the wastewater treatment process contains numerous chemicals that humans consume on a daily basis and which our government has little to no regulations on and for which our treatment plants are not set up to properly treat. For example, Something as simple as a daily prescription holds many chemicals that cause harm to us and our environment. But the whole array of chemicals that are produced in the United States, which is about 50,000 chemicals, almost none of them are required to be monitored for because they're not supposed to be in the water. We, we simply aren't monitoring for, for chemicals. We don't, and then the other part is of, the, of these 50,000 chemicals, there's maybe 300 that we really know what the impact on public health is. The combination of chemicals that are produced in sludge negatively affects the health of communities that surround fields where it is applied. There is a higher reported rate of residents with asthma and cancer, in addition to both short and long-term health problems. Aside from the, you know, aside from the chemical contamination that's in the sludge, which is a big deal. There's, there's still pathogens. Mm. They're not actually killing all the pathogens, and so there's some real problems. There's not a single community that's being um, exposed to this that does not have higher asthma rates, respiratory distress, higher um, rates of uh, thyroid disorders, thyroid cancer, higher um, cancer rates. Alamance County in North Carolina is one of the many places that has been directly affected by the chemicals in land applied sewage sludge. Nancy Holt, a resident of Alamance, is one of the many voices speaking out against sewage sludge. And one of the schools in Alamance County um, has a sludge applied field 
right across the road. And UNC put a clinic inside that school because they had the highest um, rate of absenteeism of any school in North Carolina. And the asthma rate is 80% higher for those children than any other school in Alamance County. And we went to the city, we went to the county, and nobody was willing to do a thing. In fact, the 48 homes that surround this 820 some acres of land that's being sludge applied. 48 homes, the cancer rate or the death rate by cancer is 83.4%. People started um, talking about how awful it was. And my kid has got asthma now, and they can't go out at certain times if they're putting that stuff out. We can't go outside. We can't have barbecues. We can't have any function when this happens. So we called a meeting, and um, it was the um, community building was full outside. People were all around the building so they could listen. And at that time, there were seven farms um, land applying sewage sludge just in this uh, Bingham community. And after that meeting, five of them stopped because for the first time, they heard what may have been in that sewage sludge. Sludge is a free option of fertilizer, which is the biggest incentive for farmers to use it. The hazardous chemicals found in biosolids are often hidden from landowners and were not completely understood. For Nancy's town, simply making farmers aware of the contents of sewage sludge was enough to end the use of it on their land. Sewage sludge has been applied right across the road here, uh, 405 feet from the front porch um, since 1991. In fact, Nancy's neighbor, a doctor, at one point applied sewage sludge multiple days in a row and caused her to go temporarily blind due to the fumes and chemicals that were released into the air. Anyway, I called him at the office and he took my call and I told him that um, I had gone blind because of arteritis and the swelling of the optic artery um, or pressure uh, from the artery on the optic nerve. It caused me to go blind. And I said, please, could you hold off? Tell them to hold off and stop and let me recover. He said, no. He said, you want to buy my fertilizer? And, um, UNC tested the hydrogen dioxide and um, the air monitor went over to the maximum recording level and stayed there. And hydrogen dioxide is a killer. It will kill you. And quite frankly, I think that's what killed my husband because he was fine when I left him here to go to the grocery store. He was outside um, working in his flower beds and they were plowing the field across there. Um, and they had just applied sewage sludge a couple of days before. And I came back home, he was white, his lips were blue, he could hardly breathe, he couldn't talk. So I got him to the hospital and they kept asking him what poison he had been around. His death, uh, 10 days later, um, he was in good health. He taught at Elon. He taught world religions and spirituality. 
and it just devastated all of us. But we, we couldn't find causation. In fact, that's the biggest problem. You can't establish causation between the uh, synthetic chemicals and the heavy metals and what's in the air, what's in your water, um, and the uptake of um, these chemicals by foods that we eat that's grown on sewage sludge. We can't establish that. And that's why this is such an immoral program that is uh, perpetrated by the EPA. It Some ask, how is the EPA able to get away with this? Nancy and others in her community are often quieted and shut out because in North Carolina, local governments lack executive control. Local governments should be able to have some control over it, whether it's setting bigger buffers or um, when sludge gets applied, notification of neighbors, all these things that could at least help. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not they could actually say, no, you can't spread any sludge, that might be hard, um, especially in this state. This is a state that, um, I think it's called sovereign rights in other states, but local governments don't have it here. They serve at the at the behest of the state. the state government, which is what we're finding out in lots of things that have been happening through the legislature, where they, you know, took away Asheville's, you know, water department, privatized that Greensboro's um, city council, the voting district. Everybody was protesting, but it had no impact whatsoever on the city, on the county, on the farmer. North Carolina is not the only state that has been affected by a lack of local power. The problems in Flint, Michigan revealed earlier this year parallel our own state's current struggles. Yeah, you can still vote for your mayor or your school board member, whatever, but if Rick Snyder doesn't like what you and your neighbors decided in your little election, then he has the power to step in. The state can step in and effectively void local election results. We're, we're Michigan, we're Michigan. There's no difference. Right now, there's no difference. Because we have a government that doesn't give a damn. Similar to Michigan, this inefficient government style has led to issues not only affecting our land, but our water as well. Big takeaway points, you know, we've got these chemicals that we haven't been talking about, and yes, it, it's leaving the land, mm -hmm. groundwater or, or surface water. One of the major rivers in North Carolina, the Haw, has been greatly impacted by sludge due to illegal application. Farms that are near water systems are experiencing sludge runoff because of this improper application. For example, applying sludge 24 hours before or after rain is illegal, however, is not a rare occurrence. The day we met Nancy, it was raining and sludge had been applied on the fields across from her house just the night before. So they kept testing further upstream yeah. and got into the haw. And when they got into the haw, sort of below Burlington, it was like lighting up hey, on a national map how much there was. Mm -hmm. And it's like, holy cow, what's going on? These harmful chemicals have ended up in the Haw River because of the application of sewage sludge. If there are not stricter regulations in place, then our drinking water, as well as our ecosystems, will be affected and we will be forced to change our entire relationship with water. Through our many interviews, we were introduced to possible solutions, from very specific processes to broader lifestyle changes. The only way to handle, um, safely handle, um, the destruction of sewage sludge without uh, further contaminating the air, the water, or the soil is uh, through uh, plasma arc. It heats the sewage sludge up to 7,000 degrees Celsius, which is hotter than the sun. It turns it into plasma. And the only two um, um, gasification um, elements that's given off is hydrogen and carbon monoxide, which is natural gas. So you capture that, you run it through sulfur and clean it, and you could put it in a natural gas pipeline. 
or you could run generators and have electricity. The slag turns into a vitreous rock that you can crush and make aggregate that you could pave roads with. The idea would be to not introduce the problematic materials into the water supply to start with, but that's going to mean all kinds of changes in the way we do things in our homes. You know. In order to bring about positive change and help communities affected by the application of sewage sludge, more about land applied sludge needs to be learned. Sewage sludge sounds like a good idea on the surface, but just go a little deeper and there are serious underlying issues and dangerous side effects. In order to help families like the Holtz find answers and closure, more research needs to be done and awareness about this issue and our individual impact on the environment needs to be raised. The whole program to establish land application of sewage sludge is an immoral, illegitimate, scienceless, or science, it has no science behind it. There was no risk management done. Um, it was just a quick and dirty fix.